The law of total expectation will give us another important tool for reasoning about expectations. And it's basically a rule like the law of total probability, closely related to it really, for reasoning by cases about expectation. So it requires a definition of what's called conditional expectation. So the expectation of a random variable R given event A is simply what you get by thinking of uh, replacing the probability that R equals V by the probability that R equals V given A. So it's the sum over all the possible values that R might take of the probability that R takes that value given A. Okay, with that definition, we can state the basic form of the law of total expectation, which says if you want to calculate the expectation of R, you can split it into cases according to whether or not A occurs. It's simply the conditional expectation of R given A times the probability of A plus the conditional expectation of R given not A times the probability of not A. So it really looks has the same format as the law of total probability. Now, of course, it generalizes to many cases. So the general form would say that um, I can calculate the expectation of R by breaking it up into the case that A1 holds times the probability of A1, the case that A2 holds times the probability of A2 through AN. And this could very well and typically is an infinite sum, where the AIs, of course, are a partition of the sample space. So they're all the different cases, either A1 or A2 or A3. They're disjoint, and, and altogether they cover the entire set of possibilities. Well, let's use this as a, as to get a nice, different and simpler way, uh, more elementary way of calculating the expected number of heads in n flips. So let's let e of n be the expected number of heads in n flips, no, just shorthand, because the notation will be easier to work with than writing capital E brackets uh, of hn. So uh, what do we know about expectation of n? Well, I can express it in terms of um, the expectation of the remaining flips. So if I, if I have n flips to perform, they're independent, then if I perform the first flip, something happens, and after that, I'm going to do n more flips, and the expected number of flips is going to be the expected number on the remaining n minus 1 plus what happened now. Well, if I flipped ahead first, then I've got a 1 as adding to my total number of heads, and then I'm going to do n more flips. So the expected number of flips is going to be that 1 plus the expected number on the rest of them. If the first flip was not a head, it was a tail, then the total expected number of heads is simply the expected number of heads on the rest of the flips. And these are two cases where I can apply total expectation. So by total expectation, the expected number in n flips is a 1 plus en minus 1 times the probability of a head plus en minus 1 times the probability of a tail. Well, now we can do a little algebra. Multiply through here by p. That becomes a p. And this becomes a p times en minus 1. So I've got en minus 1 times p and en minus 1 times q. Remembering that p plus q is 1, this simplifies into being simply en minus 1 plus p. Well, this is a very simple kind of recursive definition of en, because you can see what's going to happen. Subtracting 1 from n adds a p. So if I subtract 2 from n, I add another p. I get 2p. And continuing all the way to the end, by the time I get to 0, I've gotten n times p. And I've just figured out what I was familiar with already, which we previously derived by differentiating the binomial theorem, the expected number of heads in n flips is n times p. But this time I got it in a somewhat more elementary way by appealing to total expectation.